Yo guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Ascended. And I wanted to make something for all of you new players and maybe even some of you more advanced players with little tips, 17 of them that are gonna give you a huge advantage, especially when you first start out in Ark Survival Ascended. Now, why is it something that I should be someone that you could even think about listening to? I never claim to know everything about this game, but I have over 10,000 hours in Ark Survival Evolved and I have basically played Ark Survival Ascended it since it came out nonstop, learning all the little tricks, tools of the trade, all kinds of stuff. So that is why I feel like I got some good tips for you. So 17 of them coming right at you. And if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. I've got a whole bunch of helpful content that you hopefully will enjoy. But other than that, let's get started. So Let's go ahead and get started with the first tip. Now, your first 10 levels, when you level your character, just so you know, you will click on this icon right here, and that icon is going to raise your character stats. The most important levels to start out from level one to level 10 are going to be based inside of weight. The reason you wanna increase weight is everything in the game has a base weight that kind of gets larger and larger the more you carry it. Now, especially early game, it doesn't feel like it, but berries and then picking up thatch on the beach, picking up fiber, picking up stones, picking up all that stuff is going to weigh you down rapidly. And having 10 extra points in weight will jump you from 100 points in weight to 200 points in weight, giving you double the carrying capacity and preventing you from being encumbered, which is going to slow you down exponentially as you get more and more weight inside of your inventory. Slowing you down is never a good thing because that means that you can get caught by creatures like raptors and dilophosaurs. So your first 10 levels should always be to increase your weight. And then after that, do it however you wish. But the first 10 levels, I always put into weight. All right, here is my next tip right off the bat. You can see it in my hand. Now, the easiest thing in Ark to do is to forget that it's so important to have a large source of warmth. Now, first off, if you do not have clothes on your body, cloth is incredibly easy to make and can be made at level three and provides you a massive ability to warm yourself. However, it's also a huge boost to have a torch out in your inventory. That torch provides you a source of warmth and it increases your insulation. Now, in order to check your insulation, you just go into your character's inventory and you can see you've got a, a cold resist and then a heat resist. You saw that my cold resist changed based on me having that torch out. So there's actually a convenient thing that you can do now if you take this torch and I put it in my hot bar, right? So what happens as soon as I put it at my hot bar, I can go ahead and click, right click on this thing and it places it inside of my belt. Now you can see it kind of places it in a funny location. However, that's gonna keep a permanent boost to my cold resist. Notice how that went up a ton, making it so early game in arc, you have a easy, easy access to prevent yourself from dying because one of the hardest things in early arc is to survive the elements. So having that easy access to like basically double your um, hypothermic insulation, or I guess now it's called cold resist, uh, is a huge advantage for you. So having that torch in your belt and you can leave it there constantly and then remake it and put it right back in there when it starts getting low on its durability. So that is a huge tip. All right, tip number three is one that is kind of shocking and you might not anticipate it. There's a lot of dinos inside of Ark that give you a lot of perks that you don't realize are insanely powerful, right? So one of the earliest things that's hard to do inside of Ark is to survive the weather. We talked about that in the second tip. However, there is a creature that essentially negates all of that, and that is the otter. Otters are one of the most valuable things inside of Ark, because if you remember from that tip two, we had a small hypothermic insulation and hyperthermic insulation. If you look at the inventory, when you get an otter, it instantly goes up over 150 points in cold resist, and then it increases your heat resist as well. And then also, if you activate the otter's melee, increase the melee when it levels up, it's going to increase both your heat and your cold resistance, which is going to prevent your character from having any problems early game and save you a lot of trouble from dying over and over and over again. Benefit is again, you can swim in the water with a creature, an otter, and it's not gonna have any problems. So that is a huge advantage. Plus, otters, even though you might not recognize this, if you throw them in the water, they will hunt down any fish kill them, bring them back to you, and give you silica pearls or black pearls as a reward for you. So find yourself a nice little pool where the otters tend to spawn anyways, throw them in the water when you get nearby if you can find a fish, and they will insta-kill it, bring it back to you, and give you some early game resources. Very nice, a little tip for early game. 
All right, the next thing that you need to know about is your hot bar setup. Now, if you look at the bottom of my screen, you can see I have mine numbered one through five, and then I use the arrow keys as well for my hot bar. Now, what your hot bar is, is an instant way to get out a weapon without having to go into your inventory. However, Ark Survival Ascended also has a hidden hot bar. If you hold, for most people, it's going to be your Q. For me, it, I've set it to my Z. It'll bring you up a hot bar with hidden options. Now, your first option, that first row of stuff, is going to be things that are useful and consumable or that you can use, right? So these are usable things. So berries, uh, binoculars, things like uh, weapons will go in there. And that's something that's very useful to use. And you can activate those by hitting left or right in order to change those. And you can switch between them pretty rapidly. Now, the next one, if you cycle through those windows, is going to give you access to your placeables. Placeables being things like foundations, placeables being things like uh, gateways, anything like that. That, it's going to give you a hot bar of your usable things. Now, if you hold Z, it'll go back to your regular hot bar and you can switch between the two of them rather quickly. Now, that is something that was added in Ark Survival Ascended, so a lot of people are still learning that that's even a thing. So hopefully this little tip is something you take advantage of early so you don't waste your resource space in your regular hot bar by putting consumables in it. Just go to your second hot bar and then it'll be there for you waiting handily. All right, guys, my next tip is actually pretty easy. In the wild now, you will actually find two different types of creatures. You will find the fully grown adult creatures, and sometimes if you look nearby with them, you will find baby creatures that happen to be nearby. And you can see that the baby creatures exist. They are much smaller, and then you can see that they have some sort of little nursing thing directly above them, right? So you can see that little pacifier-looking object. That pacifier-looking object means that that parent is directly related to this one, so you either Either need to get rid of the parent or tame the parent and it will give you the option to claim this juvenile triceratops or whatever creature you want you will save yourself a ton of time taming and by the way you get huge boosts for raising a baby dinosaur instead of just actually knocking one out and taming it so as soon as you take out the parent nearby you should be able to walk up and hit e on these things and then you should be able to claim them now, claiming them is going to provide you with a large amount of uh, boost over just taming a wild one. A tamed wild one will not give you an imprinting bonus, whereas actually getting a baby and growing it up is going to give you a massive imprint bonus on top of it. And all you have to do is hit E on the actual baby dino as soon as you have taken out the parent dino. Now, you can find almost any creature in the entire game in the baby dino stage. You just have to run around and look. If you see them, do your best to take out the parent dino, and it's a huge boost to be able to imprint on a baby dinosaur instead of just knocking one out and forcing food down its throat. All right, guys, my sixth tip that is going to help you out a massive amount, and it's one of those things in early arc, it's very difficult to accept, but it's not a big deal. You might as well just start a kill tracker for yourself because the number of times that you are going to die in game from things that you did not expect, did not anticipate, or can't do anything about, frankly, is massive. A lot of people get really upset when they die inside of arc. They'll do something stupid like jump off something that seems like it's not going to cause damage, and then you get insta-killed, or you just happen to turn around a corner, and there's a raptor staring you in the eyes and he's like let's play a game and you don't want to but he decides to anyways so you are going to die a lot do not worry about it and speaking of dying in arc there is a new feature inside of arc survival ascended that if you get stuck or having a problem if you hover over your specimen implant you can see that there's a respawn available in countdown timer if you hit e or you can right click and then click respawn you will respawn and allow yourself to move to the nearest bed or nearest spawn location this is very useful if you get stuck or something goes wrong in that regard so accept that this game is going to cause a lot of deaths and move on from it. All right, guys, the next tip on the list is number seven. This is important for any player, whether you are new or experienced or anything. The most important thing to know where they are on the map, not always claiming them, by the way, is to know where Explorer Notes are. Now, Explorer Notes are something that you can access by going into your inventory and hovering over the Explorer Note option, and you can see that there are tons of them in the game. Now, the ones that are available right now, just so you can see them, there are four sets on the island, meaning that you can get over 100, give or take. Uh, so you can see 31 in each one. So it's like, what, 120, 130 per map. And what they do is they give you an immediate level boost and they multiply your level experience earned by either two or four. And those will combine together to give you times eight experience for when you're doing things on the island. So if you plan on going into a cave 
and you want to get a whole bunch of experience with a dinosaur, go ahead and grab an explorer note by just walking up to it. They look like this, right? They will activate as soon as you're nearby. And then the lower right side of your screen, you will see a explorer XP time. So it will give you a buff that you can look at in here and you can see I get quadruple XP for this one quadruple XP for 580 more seconds. This is a massive thing. If you're going to start crafting things, let's say I wanted to make a raft or anything, instead of just getting the one X experience, I'm going to get four times that experience for finding this XP bonus. And that's a massive helper, especially early game when you're looking to level up quickly. All right, guys, this is the next tip for you. Tip number eight, all early resources can be found near the water. A lot of people don't realize this, but if you look up into the land, you can see the access to trees, obviously. If you were to go into your inventory and have access to a pick, and then you also want a metal hatchet, that is the best things that you can use early game. You can upgrade to those pretty easily, and they make a massive difference over having stone tools. But instead of just being have access to stone wood and thatch and fiber which you can get on land if you go into the water you can actually get an insane amount of flint as well as metal you just have to find some coral locations and they look like little round objects in the ocean and they you can harvest these in order to get a ton of flint from some of them and then if you manage to find a blue one you will not only get metal, but you will get access to oil as well. So you can see that I can get metal, oil, all kinds of stuff from this uh, ocean just by going into it. And this is on 1x, by the way. So you can just go in the water, get yourself access to some quick metal without much of an issue. You don't even need a creature. And I've already got some metal and all those more difficult resources to gather just by going into the water now it's super easy to be able to do this and you just have to make sure you check out your oxygen and then that weight if you're checking and remember those first 10 levels if you pump those into a weight this is where that starts to matter so you can start harvesting the creature i guess the resources in the sea without using a creature at all free metal free flint free everything that you need without having to go up a mountain at all so the resources of the sea right off the shore that is a huge advantage that has been introduced in arc survival ascended and yeah pretty useful all right the next tip guys yes it is nice to be able to harvest your own resources using a pick or using a hatchet however one of the most important things and the point of this game entirely is to get dinosaurs so you want to be able to use these dinosaurs to harvest things and the reason is is that simply having a dinosaur and using it as a resource gatherer will give you three times the amount of resources that you could have possibly gotten on your own each dinosaur has a special ability and you want to learn what those special abilities are for example an anki can go under the water just like this and get access you can see these blue nodes down here right to an insane amount of early metal and early uh, oil without ever having to leave shore. I mean, without having to go far from shore and it will harvest things much faster than you can possibly harvest it. And by the way, they will also harvest berries for you should you actually want them to if you go on to land. So pretty easy to access just generic tames and get some early resources. It's much faster than using any form of uh, your hand because you can see that I was harvesting for a little while got 27 he got 125 or 145 oil and metal so tames are your best friend you want to tame as many as you can to make the tasks that you have in arc easier and more fun to take care of all right next up on my list guys just so you can see one of the most important steps inside of arc and my 10th tip is flyers are one of the best things that you can do whether it's early mid or late game in order to give yourself access to the skies flyers like the pteranodon are your best early game in even late game mount for picking people off of tames because of their speed they are one of the best dinosaurs in the entire game however they lack weight right so because they have some stats that allow them to be very quick their weight is quite terrible, so they are not a good transport bird. So you need to have multiple types of flyers when you're going into the sky, including the Argentavis, who has a much better weight value and overall stats, but are insanely slow. So one of the best things that you can do is vary the amount of dinosaurs you have, including the flyers. Flyers are very important, and yes, they will give you access to being able to check out different areas, but you wanna make sure you have different types of flyers as you're going through the sky. Last thing I'll say about flyers is if you are holding the sprint command, you drain exponentially more stamina than you would by just normally flying. So be very careful about that and keep an eye on your stamina because you're going to need to land a little bit or you will get knocked out of the sky. So make sure you're cautious of that when it comes to flyers. 
All right, guys, my 11th tip is they have totally reworked how loot crates work inside of Ark. Almost every single loot crate that you go up to now is going to be worth your time. Even a low level, which you would consider to be right here, a low level green loot crate, can have some very nice loot inside of it with saddles that are insanely high, blueprints that are going to make your day, or weapons that could be very useful for you overall, including anything from raw resources. So all of those are very useful. You should always get it. Even if it's a white drop or a green drop or a blue drop, the lowest three, sometimes they have crazy, crazy things inside of them. Now, the next thing you want to be aware of is if a drop has a ring around it, that means you have double loot inside of it. So when you see a no matter what white drop or not, you should always get the drops that have rings around them because double loot increases your quality uh, that you're going to get by two times. So always pick up every single loot crate. They're very valuable. They do have level caps, but I promise if they're a little bit out of your way, they're always worth your time. All right, my next tip. This is the 12th tip, using R to change weapon attachments. You are gonna start getting to the point in this game where you've got multiple things that you can do with an individual weapon, whether that be a crossbow and shooting a normal arrow versus a trank arrow versus a zip line versus a grappling hook, or if you're using a long neck and using your uh, shocking dart, your tranquilizer dart, or your just generic ammo. There's a new feature inside of Ark Survival Ascended that is going to allow you to basically do that while you're still on the move. If you hold R, you are going to have the option, what is called your wheel, or if you want to think of it that way, it's a hot wheel that allows you to quickly switch to different types of ammo as you are on the move. Now, learning how to do this is very important because if you're being chased by something, you can simply do this on the run while you're moving. And that is a big factor, right? So there are also mods that use this, this wheel, and using that wheel is gonna add you a whole bunch of functionality that is going to make your life much easier. You can also access your Tames actual inventory that are on your shoulders when you inevitably get Tames on your shoulders like we talked about with the Otter earlier. You can access its inventory without actually throwing it off your shoulder. A huge update for Ark. All right, guys, my 13th tip for your early game and beginners parts of Ark. One of the most valuable things that you can get in the entire game is blueprints. Blueprints are going to increase your ability to play the game because they're going to do a couple of things for you. One, blueprints always give you an opportunity to make higher level gear, whether that's a weapon, armor, saddle, anything. It's always going to have more statistics if you use a blueprint. Now, blueprints can also be adjusted if I increase my overall crafting skill. See how my crafting skill is 1140? Because of that, I am able to make higher level blueprints than I even see available, right? So this is a 53 armor, 151 durability blueprint. However, I can make it even higher. You can see 69 armor, hey, hey and then 196 durability. I am able to do that because by increasing my crafting skill, I get what you see on top of the screen, a crafted skill bonus, and using a blueprint will allow you to make better items overall. And better items are incredibly important because by putting something like this on, just to give you a comparison, you can see 25 durability, 10 armor, 151 durability and 53 armor. Both of those stats are incredibly important and you're gonna get a random roll every time you make it. But the better you can get on your character, the better off you are. Durability means how many times you can get hit without your clothing breaking. And then your armor is going to be your reduced damage. So 72 armor is very good. Every time I get hit in that foot region, I'm going to take a reduction of damage of incoming stuff. Massive, massive things and blueprints are super valuable for that reason because you can craft things higher than anything was ever available before. Make sure you collect all the blueprints you can and store them inside of your blueprint closet. All right, tip number 14. This is one that is probably one of the most useful ones that is kind of an advanced level stat or an advanced level thing that you use. And this is called your mind wipe tonic. You will learn how to make these recipes. I'm not going to tell you how because you have to learn for yourself, but you will learn them throughout the game just by getting recipes. Now, once you make a mind wipe tonic and eat it, it will reset all of your engrams and all of your stats. So you can see that you go back to being level one and all of your engrams go back to being unlearned. Now, this is great if you want to reset your points available which means that you want to learn some new engrams or if you want to reset how your character works 
This is great to do because there's a couple of valuable things that you can do by resetting your stats. One, if you increase your crafting skill, you increase the ability to make better loot from blueprints. Or let's say you want to have a heavy character that can carry 9,999, whatever it is, weight. You can always change how your character is depending on the different stats that you want, right? There are some very valuable stats across the board, no matter how you look at it. It's not really a wrong way to do this. There are certain things that work better. Health tends to be one of the meta stats that people like to use. Weight tends to be a meta stat that people like to use because end game, it can be like some of the stuff you're carrying around is very heavy for what's called your kit. And that is very useful for having mind wipes available is one of the most important things that you can use. My next tip for you guys, basically, this is the easy one that we kind of brought up earlier. So when you have two creatures that are directly next to each other, you want to make sure you always have the ability to breed a new dinosaur, because when you raise a baby dinosaur from zero to 100 percent, you're going to get what's called an imprinting bonus. And that imprinting bonus is going to give you an increased stat capability. Just so you can see, it's going to increase the health, it's going to increase the food, and it's going to increase the overall melee damage and a bunch of other statistics. To show you what I mean by that, I'm going to show you this guy right here. So here is all of his stats, 242 for his melee. And then if I give him an imprint quality that is equal to mine, you can see it goes up to 289%. He increases all of his stats across the board by about 10 to 15% and it's going to make your dinos overall better. So having dinos that you raise from 0% to 100% is going to give you better overall dinos. And that is how you, in the long run of things, get dinos that are broken and you can start learning how to do mutations and that's very advanced, far level stuff. But every time you get the chance, all I'm trying to say, tame the wild baby dinos or try and have eggs and baby dinos of your own because that imprinted bonus also passes on. So as soon as I ride this creature, I get a increased stats as well for riding this creature. It does more damage and it takes less damage incoming. And it used to be a movement speed boost, but that got gotten rid of. So imprinted dinos are much more important. All right, my 16th thing that's going to help you out, and this one doesn't seem like it might be very useful, but it is. So if you look in the bottom right of my screen, you can see that my food is slightly lit up more than the rest of my stuff and my, uh, my health, my stamina, all that stuff, that means your character has to poop. Now, I know that sounds weird, but if your character has to poop, it's going to drain your food faster. So what you want to do, tap your plus button, your character will poop and it will get rid of that debuff and that debuff will allow you to have normal food drop. If you do not have that, it's going to cause problems with your character. I know that seems weird. It's a simple little thing, but pooping will prevent you in the long run from wasting stamina, wasting food, wasting your stats. So make sure you poop when you get your get your get a chance to. Anytime that food icon in the lower right of your screen actually lights up. All right, guys, my 17th and final tip for you is this one is more of a justifying something being OK with you. So one of the most important things you can do in this game is use the entire map to your advantage. Some people say that the one thing you want to do is only have one base, and that's just completely wrong. Ark is a beautiful game with lots of different biomes, lots of different abilities and lots of different creatures. What you want to do is have as many bases as your heart can, because it's very useful to be able to have different beds when you spawn into different regions. So if you have a base close by, it means that you don't have to go very far if you die. I'm just going to show you an example of what I mean. If I have a base on top of this hill and I die across the map, I'm going to have to run the entire way across the map or hope that I can get close in order to get my stuff back. However, if you have a base nearby, let's say I've got a base in Redwoods here, or I've got a base over there on the mountain, that's going to save me a ton of time from having to you know, run all over the place. Having small outposts all over the map is one of the most valuable things, whether you're playing PvP, PvE, any mode. Having beds anywhere at any point in time is incredibly useful for any purpose, mostly because this map is massive and you can instantly travel by simply spawning in a bed, whereas running across it is going to take you many hours to try and run from point A to point B on the end of the map. Even flying across the map using one of the faster tames is going to take you five or ten minutes to get across the map. So make sure that you have beds all over the place because the map is amazing. Arkin is an awesome game, with lots of different features, and you need to make sure that you enjoy the game that you want to enjoy in the way you want to enjoy it. Now, 
all of those are important things. These are 17 uh, tips that'll help you get better at ARC. Yes, there are a lot of tips and there are hundreds of things. There are thousands of small things that will help you that you will learn along your, your journey in ARC, but that's the fun of the game. You are gonna learn the things that you enjoy doing, the ways that you enjoy doing it, and that is why ARC is such a great game. Now, these tips are awesome. Hopefully they help you out. If you don't mind, again, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and consider subbing to the channel. But other than that, teach out.